from Austin's faculty. And the uh, title of the presentation is Assessment Using Blackboard uh, Mobile. And uh, we have Professor Rowland, uh, Ramdas, and Ronel Shaw. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ronel Shaw. Um, I'm one of the faculty members at Coastal Community College. I teach LPM students. And Dr. Ramdas teaches the RN Evening students. Uh, so to this morning, I wanted to talk to you guys about mobile testing with Blackboard. How many of us have a black, um, I'm sorry, a smartphone? It took me a while to get my smartphone because uh, I'm not that technologically savvy. So it took me a while to get it, but once I got it and, and felt more comfortable with it, I was good to go. Okay, so in terms of our students, you have to think about them in that way as well. Some of our students, um, they may be a little um, uncomfortable with using technology, so we want to expose them to that, right? So today, we want to encourage faculty to consider using the mobile system inside the classroom, and for that purpose is to enrich the classroom experience. Why should we use, I'm sorry, why should we use um, the cell phone we want to, the process of how we work at the Coastal Community College and the nursing program is each week we give a, a weekly quiz. So we thought, how could we save time? How could we do time management but still enrich the students? Um, so we upload through Blackboard 10 quizzes or 10 questions that students inside the classroom can use their cell phone to take the quiz, right? bringing technology into the classroom, saving time, and really engaging the students in that way to use their technology. Um, this is effective use of classroom time, interactive, because they're interacting with their um, technology, of course, and it reduces technology fear. I have students who are uncomfortable with using Blackboard, but once you introduce this to them, they feel more comfortable, more relaxed using Blackboard. Um, it's convenient because the majority of the students have a smartphone. And it prepares the students for technology in the workplace. So as a nurse working into the, um, the hospital setting, you're surrounded by technology. So why not introduce that to them in the school setting so they're prepared for the workforce. And it's environmentally friendly. You're not giving them tests with paper and pencil, so you're saving that Portion. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm going to actually show you how I create these exams. Basically, my students are doing not doing well. I have to get them prepared for their board's exam. Uh, they come to class. They don't read the content. Uh, they come ready to, for lecture. So what I did was something that I didn't originally believe in: is giving them a quiz before actually teaching content. So what I did was, I created, uh, using Blackboard, they have this feature called Mobile Testing, and I would ask every week 10 questions prior to teaching the content. What it did was, uh, and I made each quiz one point, students would then come into class, and it's, and it's good, efficient use of classroom time. As soon as they come in, they turn on their mobile phones, they uh, go to the Blackboard app, they answer the 10 questions. As soon as the questions are done, because of the way it's set up, it's graded, they get their results, and then we, we start, I start the lecture. Uh, the grades go right into gradebook, so at the end, I mean, from faculty standpoint, it's super easy uh, with less time used. The, the, the most time I use is actually finding questions to put on this exam. What I found from uh, using this, and it's, I only started this semester, I found that students are more prepared for lecture. They actually, come to class, now when I say something, and you know, nurse in the field is always changing, if I, if I say something from the, you know, that is not uh, consistent with what's in the textbook, they'll say, no, 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 that's not what the textbook says. And I felt like, this is great, because they're actually reading the book, and now they're challenging me, and we're actually having good conversations in class. So, what I want to show you is how I actually incorporate uh, mobile testing. So this is the faculty guide, and it's available on, um, 
on our website when you go to Blackboard under help. And there are different uh, questions. So it can be fun, um, and, it's, and it's only with 9.1, but I believe everyone's here from CUNY, right? Everybody's CUNY, and CUNY uses 9.1. Um, to create a mobile test, you ha keep in mind when as faculty you're creating mobile testing, you can't do this on your smartphone. You need to be on a laptop or desktop to do this. So you're, you, it's not like you can use the mobile app. I have the mobile app, my students have the mobile app, but you're not able to create exams on the mobile app. You have to create your exams traditionally on Blackboard, on a laptop, or in my office, on, our, on my desktop. Um, you would go in under test, you would do mobile, mobile compatible tests. So you wanna choose this option because you notice that there, there's test survey assignments. You wanna make sure you choose the mobile compatible test. Then you are prompted to fill out the following test settings. So you need to fill out the settings and there's this little red star that will tell you what it is that you need to fill out. So I will say quiz one and I give it simple names, quiz one to quiz 10 and for description, I let them know how much time they have, whether it's a, you know, a, a 10 question test, I only give them 15 minutes because you know, effective use of classroom time is important. So I don't wanna have you know, an hour of taking quizzes and collecting and then scanning scantrons and stuff, so it works really well. Um, the settings, I make it available, uh, or I could do it, you know, I usually make up my exams on Sunday morning, so I, I set the dates when it will be due by. You could actually do a password and the require password option. You know, there was a lot of discussion among my colleagues about students cheating and so forth. And um, this option to require a password would be if you don't want the student to take this test outside of class. So you give it a password and when the students are in the room, you say, um, you know, the password is today, whatever, this is, whatever it is you decide, you give them the, the password, keep in mind they can still text their friend the password. You know, so for every time you think you have one up on the students, they're way, you know, they have two more times. Yeah. And, and, and we talk a lot about cheating, and, and yes, you know, I'm aware of all the different options students will say, but I do different things with, with, in trying to do that, whether it be preventing them from go back, giving them only one minute per question, um, jumbling the actual question and the answers as well to kind of help decrease. And, there will always be some way some student will try to figure things out for you. So these are the settings that you can, um, you, you can play with. Uh, I usually put, give them one attempt, you save your settings, then you go into new question. Once you set that first screen up, then it gives you the option now to start to put in your questions. And it's very, very simple. You, uh, you see you have different options here. Uh, we have multiple choice. Maybe I can make this, zoom this in a little bit bigger. Can you guys see now a little bit better? Okay, so um, you have different options of how to create different questions. Usually I only use multiple choice. True or false for us at the nursing we really don't use because we have to have higher level question in. Uh, there is a hot spot. Uh, fill in multiple blanks, short answers. I will use short answers for math when I teach uh, those calculations. I have used a short answer. Um, and, and there's other options, uh, other options for creating questions and I'll show you a little bit. I just want to let you know that I use multiple choice and fill in a short answer when I do the math. So then you would just uh, click on your new question and it's very simple. You know, if you're doing a true-false question, you type in your question here. Um, and, and you just make it true false, you, you fix the answer. It's usually one point, I give it one point, you can make it 10 points, however much points you wanna do. Uh, some questions you can change, if you want one question to be a higher worth more points, you could do that. This is an example of a fill in the multiple blanks. For instance, water is formed by hydrogen and oxygen, so you put these in parentheses as the answer and then the student would see a blank and they would just type it in, so you can do that. Um, your true false question, again, hot spot, fill in the blanks. Now, um, you again would go in and you could have a variety of questions. There's, uh, you know, in my 10 questions, you can change them to whatever points you want. Give them a point value. When you do a multiple choice, which is what I use a lot of, 
um, you kind of keep adding options. You could have as many options as you want. We typically use four, you know, four with three distractors. And you would just click on the, the one that you want it to be the answer. Short answer, you type in the question. The hotspot I have never used. I've never used the hotspot, but certainly in nursing, we do use hotspots, for instance, when we do assessment of, uh, let's say, lung sounds or heart sounds, and we want to know where to place the stethoscope, we could do hotspots. But it's not something I have actually um, used because it requires you uploading a file, and I haven't um, used this. Uh, this is the fill in the blank and the numeric, so it's perfect for doing dose calculation. So um, in, in conclusion, uh, mobile testing are designed for students to take on their mobile devices. Um, my colleague Slav did a nice job last uh, talking about how mobile devices are being used more and more, and, and you mentioned that cell phones are, are expanding and tablet use are, are sort of stable with uh, desktop shrinking a lot. So um, using the mobile phones for, that students use, I think it's, it's, it, it's a great way to incorporate technology and have efficient use uh, of classroom time. Uh, I think that students so far have been engaged in it. Some of the problems that I have encountered and it's just one problem that I've encountered, and it's a, it's a location problem. It's our Wi-Fi sometimes just go down in the classroom, and that's been a, a, a huge uh, headache for me. That's been a huge headache for me. Um, you know, besides that, it's, it's been working well. The students actually like it. Um, one of the great benefits of this as well is the item analysis. I, I, use, I utilize the item analysis, and Blackboard is great. I don't know if anyone here uses item analysis when they go over with their students. Does anybody have any experience with item analysis? So what I do is I'll go over the exam and I pull up the item analysis and students will not question you when they see how the class answer. You know, for instance, if they see 90% um, of the students got this question right, they usually don't even ask because they realize, wow, how could I miss this? They will question you when it's 10 or 15% of the class got the question right. That's when, you know, but usually I will then revise the question. There's usually some issue with the question and then I'll either decide I'll give credit to the other answer or however I decide to, um, to proceed with it. Um, it's been a little bit difficult with, with doing select all that apply with the mobile testing, but I utilize select all that apply for my classroom exams, which is the regular Tested. Um, like I said, item analysis works great for this. Uh, the students are engaged. I haven't had any issues except for when I do signal in the, in the room. And it hasn't been consistent, but it does occasionally occur, which would then mean I'll just have to go back on the grade section of Blackboard and reset their test, and then they can go ahead and uh, complete the test. After they finish it on the mobile device, is it like regular Blackboard? They can no longer view it, right? They can no longer view it, correct. And, and you know, we talked a lot this morning about, about cheating and plagiarism and so forth. And yes, students can do screenshots of your questions and it's something that I worry about because one of the things I do with my questions is I look at my questions from previous classes and see uh, how the active analysis is and that's when I decide if I'm gonna use a question, drop a question. So I am worried that students are taking screenshots of my questions and then perhaps passing it on to their junior classmates. So, it is, it is an issue, do I worry about it? Yes, but do I, does it prevent me from creating online testing and keep pushing the envelope to go in the direction of technology and embracing it? No, I continue to do it. So, it's time, right? It's time, so the test is time. It's, uh, you know, 10 questions, I give them 15 minutes, um, and, and, you know, after that, it'll just automatically submit. So if they, if they only finish half of the test or they finish most of the test, if they are late, it's also an incentive for students to get to class on time uh, because then they know they're gonna miss the whole point. And you know, 10, 10 quizzes equal 10 points is the, an entire letter grade for students. But so they, they could be somewhere. Yes, so, so they days, could be, right? so one student said to me, she's always running late, and she said to me, can I take your test on the, on the subway? And yes, I could, but I, but I decided not to. I decided not to. I wanted her to try to really make it on time. So I put, I passed the test, I, did a, I put a password in, 
But again, there's always a way of her classmates being just text her the password. Because when everybody's in, the doors are locked, and I said, okay, well, the password for today's test is uh, heart. Because we're doing a cardiac test. And then they'll, um, you know, somebody can text her the password and she can still take the test. But then, you know, I do take attendance. So I'll know she comes in late, and then if I can see a response, I know she would have taken the test, and that's considered cheating. Because I've, I've you know, clearly instructed them on this. Um, you know, the Blackboard app is free. They can download it, whether it's an Android phone, whether it's, a, whether it's an iPhone. Um, you know, this conference is great because we talked a, lot, a little bit about some of the some of issues students have, and, and I think Slav and his colleague talked about how 86%, I believe, students were familiar with Blackboard, and I, yes, I do have that issue with some of my students not being familiar with Blackboard. And it, it, you know, it's it's an easy tool to use, but they just haven't used it in their other courses. So um, when they come in, there is a little bit of a learning curve. So they can take the Are You Ready test. Yes, so they can take the Are You Ready test. Yes, which I learned about this morning. So um, yes, yes. Out of curiosity, I wonder after the test is completed and I haven't used this module of Blackboard, can the students uh, gain access to the results afterwards? And if not, can they take snapshots of their answers with their mobile phones? Okay, great question. For the mobile test, no. For the traditional test, yes, if you said it this way. So I have a period of review. What I usually do with my regular traditional test, that it's in classroom, it's not on the mobile app, Th that the days that I give a unit exam, I say unit exam because when I cover a big topic, I'll have an exam and I have six exams. I will request the, the, the computer on wheels to come in, they'll use their laptop. At the end of the exam, the buying that students want to use, utilize the technology and not use paper and pencil, because a lot of my colleagues use paper and pencil, is for them to see the grade and sustain this thing. Uh, so they're able to see the grade. But that also has problems, because when I go over the item analysis, this last exam, I clicked the wrong uh, answer. So when I went in and now fixed the answer, one student had chosen the wrong answer like me, and now her grade dropped. So she's freaking out, she's really upset because she said, you know, I had a 78 and now I have a 76, that's how is that possible? So there are that issue. Then I also, so what I do is by going over the, the, the exam in class, question by question through the item analysis, almost 90% of my students don't come back to the office to review the test. Because they are seeing the questions, they know what answer they chose, and they're reviewing the test. But I always have the students who fail to make an appointment or come to my office hours to really sit there and to see if there's something. Because sometimes I can tell, are they not reading the book? Are they just not reading the question appropriately? I can pick up something, or they may pick up something. And it's a time for me to, to kind of give them a conference and, and to see where they're at and to identify any issues. But they can take a snapshot. They can, so when I go over, so at the end of the test, uh, they have just a grade. And you have to set it because you can set Blackboard to do a lot of things. You can set Blackboard to show them the correct answer, rationale, you can do all kinds of settings with it. But I just give them their numerical grade, then I go over the test on the screen. So yes, they, but if they pick up the phone to take a picture, I'll stop them. And they have, they have, they have said, oh, oh, I stop, no, you can't use the cell phone. Because I explained to them, these are questions that I've worked on for a while, these are questions that I continue to, to get data on validity and reliability, and I, and I would like to use these questions in the future. You know, so, um, and, and things change, and maybe the way I have thought have changed too, maybe something might have made them got the answer better the next time, because it's, it's hard. Sometimes I think that's a really tough question in the class as well, and then I say, oh, I'm gonna throw them an easy question, and, and you know, it's 50%, and it's, it's hard. So you never can predict how they do on the exam, but that's how I, um, you know, I usually have them get feedback on their exams. And, and for the most part, everybody's happy. Once they see the item analysis on the grades, they're usually, the What's that? When do you do the item analysis? So I do the item analysis right after. Right, right after, after right after the test. I'll go over the test. So I go over the questions and it's a learning process for them too. And I've actually now that evaluations are open, students have been doing the evaluations and, and I've had three students that came to me and says, you know, I find when you go over the item analysis and we're reading it, I it's a learning process for me, especially the questions that I get wrong. 
So the three of them have said to me, you know, I just want to let you know that please don't ever change it because it gets a little loud sometimes in class and it can be disruptive because if students are like, oh my God, I can't believe 40% of the class can't write, you should give me credit for this one, you know, and I'm like, no, 30% or less, that's when I revise the question, that's what the literature say, you know, so, um, but students have come and said that they, it's helpful for them. I think that uh, today's students, they, they, they want, since they have access to information quickly, uh, they really, when they go to a classroom, they expect to get the results right away, and they want to know if they fare well, and knowing that they know technology, they expect that. Right. And uh, I see it in my classroom, you know, the moment we have a quiz, they to know how they fare in the quiz. And I think this is a great way of giving them instant information. It, it is. And you know, for us as faculty, it's really good, effective use of our time. You know, we're not running upstairs. I see my colleagues with the Stanfron, you know, and then they have the, 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 the regular paper grade book, and they're kind of like matching up the Stanfron and putting it in the end. I mean, everything just gets uploaded to grade book, and then I, I can work on it, you know, there. Yes, uh, Yeah, it's the same way, I, you know, I create the questions and usually I sit there and I manually type in my questions you or I cut and paste them, but you can, you can, can yes. Can you translate, transfer the uh, regular test to the mobile test? The regular test to the mobile test, they're a little bit different because the mobile test, if you do a mobile test, it's on the app and, and then they can take it on yourself. I understand, but no, if I have a regular test, uh -huh. can I change it to the mobile test? No, 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 you can't.